Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Sal, and this is another Expedition Log. Today's expedition takes us out to Steubenville, Ohio, to a mall that has definitely seen better days. In the late 70s and 80s and sort of in the 90s, a couple years into the 90s, this mall was amazing. It had incredible aesthetics, the traffic was incredible, um, the occupancy historically for the mall was pretty good. Recently, this mall has taken the new persona of a crestfallen mall amidst buckled floors and fractured walls. So come take a walk with me in the Fort Steuben Mall. But first, a word from our sponsor, Kaufman's. This is the sale you wait for, what you want for work or play. The biggest sale this season, but it happens just today. Kaufman's Night Sale, the biggest sale of the year, starts tomorrow. For two days only, you'll find the lowest prices of the season. Shop extended store hours, 8 a.m. till midnight, Friday and Saturday. And don't miss early bird specials both days, plus all-day home doorbusters. This is where it all starts. This is where it gets good. Kaufman's Night Sale. The history for this mall goes back to 1787, when this guy... Captain John Francis Hamtramck of the 1st American Regiment needed protection against hostile forces while he and his surveyors were on assignment by the Continental Congress to map the Northwest Territory. They constructed a fortress and camp, and Hamtramck decided not to name it after himself, but after this guy, the drill master to George Washington in the Revolutionary War, Friedrich Wilhelm von Steuben. Affectionately, they named the fort Fort Steuben. Many years later, in 1969, plans for a seven-story Hilton-branded motor lodge fell through, and in August of 1969, Murray H. Goodman announced plans to build a regional enclosed shopping mall off of John Scott Highway. In 1972, Mr. Goodman began construction on the 68.9-acre parcel for a mall that would ultimately have a total leasable area of 813,165 square feet. 187 years after the surveyors of the Northwest Territory built Fort Steuben, work was completed and the formal dedication was given to the Fort Steuben Mall. The original anchors included Kaufman's, Carlisle's, Sears, and a Cinemas 3 movie theater. The mall had a beautiful aesthetic language, consisting of two resplendent fountains with jets that would shoot the water 10 feet in the air, bridges to cross over, and dramatic skylights with geometric styled recessed lights. The mall was painted in wonderfully muted retro tones and had tile on the floor wall to wall. Historically, malls have been the central social hub for kids and young adults as an outlet to gaze upon toys and treasures and a place to socialize and binge on junk food as the smell of chlorine and fried food permeated the air. The fountain water had to be kept clean after all. The 80s ushered in the golden age of malls, and Fort Steuben was a wonderful example, with an Aladdin's Castle arcade, many toy stores, and a full food court. The mall was in its prime for 20 years. If it were possible, I would pay a pretty hefty sum just to see the inside of the mall for 10 minutes, the way it was when it was first built. And of course that's not possible, other than the few pictures we have, but just looking at the outside of this mall and the surroundings and the out parcels, it's in really rough shape. The inside's not much better. A wonderful example of the old aesthetic is the Long John Silvers that was at this mall for quite a long time, and it was there as uh, one of the um, restaurants in the 70s and 80s. The Long John Silvers, coupled with the, the warm and inviting muted tones of the mall and the sound of the fountains roaring in the main concourse, when you walked into the Long John Silvers, you were greeted by a nautical theme and dim lanterns that made you feel like you were boarding a big wooden pirate ship. How cool must that have been? The, the warm peach tones of the mall, and then you just see these lanterns and you just feel like you're walking onto a big schooner. That, that must have been so cool. But then, the 90s were the beginning to a very rough patch that the mall would never really recover from.
1993, the mall lost its food court to make way for several subpar stores that would only last a, a year, maybe two. During this year, the Woolworths and Aladdin's castle shuttered. I would rate this mall an F minus, and that's being generous. In the wake of so many lost tenants, a Chi Chi's restaurant opened in 1994, and the Long John Silvers received a renovation, stripping it of the whimsical pirate ship theme to a more modern look. A couple years later, in 1996, sinkholes wanted to reclaim the mall and the floor would buckle and sink in certain places. This caused many shoppers and tenants to cut ties with the mall, even though it was, and still is to this day, the only regional enclosed mall within 30 miles of Steubenville. Ending the decade with the closure of Carlisle's, which was replaced by J.C. Penney's, the new millennium began with the Goodman Company announcing an ambitious $35 million expansion, renovation, and modernization of Fort Steubenville. Phase one of the project would add a new 105,000 square foot Sears building, along with an 11,000 square foot auto center. They discontinued and removed the fountains. Personally, I think it looks terrible. What we're looking at right now, this is where the main fountain in front of the Kaufmans used to be. And they changed the bold square geometric lights with just round recessed lights. And I think they just neutered it. Carpeted the entire mall and gave it a coat of bright white paint. The less dramatic phase two would move the JCPenney's to a new 60,000 square foot space. It would demolish the old space and part of the mall to construct a Walmart. Work on both phases was completed by 2003. The modernization brought more traffic, but this success was short-lived and tenants began leaving. In 2005, the mall was appraised at $55 million. A year later, the Kaufman's company folded and was acquired by Macy's. Hey, what's up, clueless security guy? Eh, he still scared me. Yeah, so the mall's awkward moment, uh, it's right here. Now, if you remember, I said back in 1996, the mall was having problems with sinkholes. It seems that they haven't learned anything in 22 years, because while this isn't a sinkhole, the floor is still buckling, and I can only assume that they were having similar problems back then. They should probably take care of that. But at least they still have Sam Goody signage. Now back in 2006, during the merger, when Kaufman's was acquired by Macy's, an anchor wasn't lost by this mall, but it still caused the Goodman Company enough grief to sell the mall after 32 years. It was purchased by DLC Management Group of New York for $49.6 million, when the occupancy of the mall was just shy of 50%. By 2011, the fair market value of the mall had fallen to 39.1 million, and by 2016, it tanked, down to 15.5 million. Sears then decided it was time to pull out, and they shuttered in July of 2016. In 2017, DLC defaulted on their loan, which the U.S. Bank National Association held the security interest of the loan for DLC. They defaulted, and the mall went up for auction. The entire auction took seven minutes and had only one bidder, which was the plaintiff, the U.S. Bank National Association. They got the mall for the minimum bid allowed by the court, which was $10.3 million. In 2016, Macy's announced widespread closures across the country, and at the end of 2017, the Macy's at the Fort Steuben Mall closed its doors. The 
the only anchor left as of the production of this video in 2018 is the JC Penney's, which closed its front doors and labeled them as emergency exits. Jones Lang LaSalle is now the manager of the mall, and I can only hope that they have a better vision than the previous management. Or maybe they should give the Goodman Company a call, because the mall is definitely, definitely falling on hard times. Maybe the next management and owner, they can give it back some of its flair. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and I'm super excited because we've reached 650 subscribers. For me, that's huge, and you all inspire me to keep producing these films. I will keep exploring, and I will keep producing, and I will keep making better content. And if there's something you disliked, let me know why, so that I can work on it and make better content. So thanks again for helping me reach 650 subscribers, and here's to many more productions in years to come. Thanks again, everybody. Take care.